Well, hi, good morning. Thanks so much for joining me here in my shop on this rainy Thursday here. So, hey, good day to be in the shop. So, uh, recap from yesterday. Uh, I powered up this radio. I uh, got no response. Certainly looks like the tubes were not heating at all. Uh, the, these tubes are so low wattage that even after they play for quite a while, you can't really feel much heat in the glass. So they could have been on. Uh, I could hear something coming out of the speaker, uh, a little bit of a hum, but not much more than that. Certainly no radio sounds of any sort. So um, my visual uh, checkout of the uh, set revealed that, and you can see it yourself, it's in really good shape under here. All the capacitors look very good. I think there's a good chance this radio can operate. But when I powered it up, it certainly didn't. Um, the one thing I've, I've uh, two things I've found uh, visually. First of all, we'll look at the uh, band switch here. Uh, this missing section uh, doesn't make sense to me. So why there would be one section missing there. So is that really a problem or not? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. So, but the real problem is this coil which appears to be damaged and appears to have a wire lead hanging out. So we're going to start there. Where is this coil in the circuit? And if you notice, there's another one essentially identical to it sitting right up here. So let's, let's find out where this is in the circuit. Jump over to the schematic. Okay, now I've already studied the schematic, so we don't have to go hunting for it. The coil in question is this one here, L5, or maybe L4. This, I'm pretty sure these are the two identical coils. So some interesting stuff about this, this string along here. These are all the two Peters. Let me, let me zoom in here a little bit. even one more. So here's the two Peters, see? V2. Notice how they numbered these. V2, V101, V102, V1, V3, V, V2 is in here somewhere. Where's V2? Here it is. Oh, here, V2. Okay, so uh, the numbering here, this 101 and 102, the 10 part represents the fact that these are on a sub chassis. See, it says they're located in tuner, or located on tuner. So a little numbering thing there. Uh, the next thing is, look at the 3V4, and you can kind of see the complications they've done here to, to try to use the two one and a half volt heaters that are in here. Uh, wow. So we have resistors installed across the heater. You see this is done every time. The resistor across the heater. So, and you know, I, I just have to think off the top of my head here about this. So the thing is, they're firing this up. Oh, that's interesting. Looks like these heaters are all powered by DC. Huh. I hadn't really noticed that before. Okay, DC and uh, 9 volts, really? 9 volts there. And then you can see the 9 volts uh, drop. 9 volts, 6.4, 3.1 eventually a zero where it's grounded back to the chassis. Nine volts, how do you get down to nine volts? I got a great big capacitor over here too. Well you stick a big resistor right here. Ten watts two two K. We we saw that resistor. It looks to be in pretty good shape in the radio. So that's how you do it. You just knock it down with that huge guy there. We better double check that. So if if this coil, or, or if I'm mistaken and it's this one, if this is open, 
then no current can flow in this circuit at all. If you have any one of these tube heaters open, current can still flow through the roundabout path. Uh, that, that's not a common arrangement. I haven't seen this very often. And the resistors are all different values. 82, 120, 100, 68. They're all very carefully selected. So any one of these resistors is off a long way. So that could cause a problem. I assume, for instance, if this 100 is actually now 1,000, if it's drifted up to a thousand, this would push a lot more current through this heater and would overheat this tube. Um, so, no current in the heater string. I'm pretty sure. Possible open circuit here, or maybe here. Possible open filament. Okay, so that sounds real straightforward, but I know what's coming next, because I did it yesterday. So we're going to make this a little less straightforward now. And how exactly would you do that? They would make it less straightforward by taking a resistance reading on these coils. Okay, the assumption being, it's a pretty good assumption. If it's open circuit, I get a big reading on here. You notice I've got the meter set to 200 ohms. Hmm, wonder why. So well, This is the coil that appears to be open circuited. Five point seven. Point two. Now we'll try the other coil. Five point seven. So uh, that test suggests to me that both these coils are working. They're both working the same way. Neither one is open circuited. Yet, man, I, I'm sure I can see the wire just hanging right here. So, uh, one thing I could do is I could snip this wire here. Um, yeah, I have more options than that. I could even snip this brown wire that's leaving this terminal. Yeah, pull the tube out. That would make this an open circuit here for sure. Where's this brown wire going? It goes, it goes up. It goes up into the tuner. I'm just thinking I could remove the brown wire briefly because it's much easier to reconnect it than cutting into this, into this actual thing. Well, that, that'd be one way. I'd have to cut this wire though to, to figure that out. Another thing I can do is I can go through all the tubes in the tube tester at this point. I think I'm on my way there anyway. Uh, but it'd be much better to turn the radio on and have it work and then know all the tubes are good than to pull them all out and spend the time and effort tube testing them. Well, I think the easiest thing is for me to release this brown wire here and uh, and, and test this again. And, and that's going to settle the issue. And then I can ignore this piece of wire. Well, why it's hanging out there, I don't know. And is that going to provide certainty? Um, yeah, with the tube pulled out, this terminal just goes nowhere. So that, that's got to work. So let's do that, because that, that's going to be certainty. And I, I like the idea of certainty. I like working with certainty. Let's see if I can pull it off by unsoldering it. A little bit of excitement this morning. I let my little cat go in our garage as part of its continuing uh, development strategy for going outdoors. She was outdoors yesterday. I let her go in the garage. I got a pretty big garage. So I came out about 45 minutes later to find her. She couldn't find her. I couldn't find her anywhere in the garage. Looked all over the place. No sign of her. And then I noticed, oh my god. The screen on the window has been slid open, and she's escaped. 
and she's out in my backyard or who knows where now could have been out there for half an hour all on her own oh my gosh I, I pretty much panicked so uh, but just a few minutes later I found her uh, sitting uh, protected from the rain up on our deck upstairs the deck is the area that she's most familiar with so far so and she just came in the house no problem at all hey two thumbs up on training our little cat to go outside safely got a nice collar with a tag or name all that stuff now it's a little scary letting the cat out for the first time okay the soldering iron should be warmed up now our other cat peanut is acting like her older brother he's being very protective that's what it looks like to my wife and I anyway um, I won't go into the stories but there's a number of things he's done that we can only interpret as concern for the other cat's well-being which is kind of weird eh? I think that's really possible I think cat experts would tell you no they just think they're gonna get fed somehow they're, whatever they're doing they're doing to get fed it's kind of true of us too isn't it really okay let's see if I now, this is a well-built radio. Chances are I can't just pull this wire off easily. And that seems to be the case. So rather than tug, 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 and end up damaging things, I'm going to snip it. We'll worry about reconnecting it later. Okay. Wire's off. Moment of truth coming. Is this coil the cause? one cause. Here we go. Let me check first the meter. Point, point two. I can get down to point two. Here we go. Oh my gosh. Look at that. So what? what is the, all this, this piece sticking out? Don't know. But guess what? That's not the problem. So yesterday I performed this exact same test, not quite as thoroughly, and I expected to find an open circuit there, of course. Broken wire, heater string not heating, I mean, it has to be the case. And then I did the resistance test, got to 5 ohms, figure, oh, it's just an alternate current path through the radio, that's all. And then I put it on this other one, and got exactly the same number. And that's when I said, hmm, should be doing all this on video. <laughs> and I stopped until just now. So I think we're into tube testing at this point. I think that's what we're, where we got to go next. Oh, I better reconnect this. I better reconnect that or we're going to have trouble. testing. So I'm going to have to get the tester out and get all that set up. So we can do that. Okay, there's my tester. Now you can't quite see this, eh? Well, I can change the lighting when we get around to it. Okay, so we'll just do these tubes as they come out. Pull this one out here. There we go. First one is the 3V4. So this is the output tube, the one with the double filament in it. 3V4. Five, two on the signal, 45 
L six three four oh seven six three four oh seven. This is like the secret codes to launch uh, nuclear missiles. Five, six, zero, zero. Launch. <laughs> no, don't launch. Take it back. Come back. Forty one. C. This is a very important control. Okay, so uh, F, 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 F. What does F? What does F denote? F, F, F denotes uh, something when you do the uh, shorts test. F. Meter will indicate short when leakage test switch is in position number one. Position number one's way over here. Okay. Thought that was only true of rectifier tubes. But did I do this right? Let's make sure I'm reading this right. 3v4, 1.5, 1.5, 2.2, 45L, 45L, bias, 63407, 63407. 7, 5600, 5600, 41, C. Okay, we're ready. And the tube, what do I do with the tube? I place the tube here. Put them in. Flip on the, I'm going to change the lighting now so you can see the panel a little better. Hopefully, hopefully you can see it better. Still can't see it all that well. Maybe it's this light here. So that's the problem. Okay, we'll let this warm up. Pretty tough to see the heaters in these tubes. Doesn't look like it's heating up though. Okay, ready on the short test. Uh, watching the meter, and on one it should go all the way up. Bing, there it went. Did you see it? Hard to see in the camera. It's flying all the way across. And this is a regular tube, amplifier tube, 1400. So 1400 is just about straight up here. It's right on. This, this, this tube is testing perfectly good. And I want to put that back in so I don't have a bunch of tubes laying around and get them mixed up. Well, this is not the easiest. <laughs> I'm up on my tippy toes here. Okay, let's get this right. This one, I think this is the IF amplifier tube. Here. A 1US. 1US. 1U5. What am I saying? 1US. 1U5 is a two part tube. This is the mixer oscillator tube, I'm guessing. Could be the detector tube, actually. 1.5. Two D. Oops, wrong thing. Signal D. What? Oh, I'm reading this wrong. 
a di di diode. A di a di boo boo boo. Hold on, hold on, making a mess here. Uh, bias zero. Seven three four hundred. Seven three four hundred. Fifty six hundred. Fifty six hundred. Forty one. It's funny, same numbers. C. F again. You know, it must be that uh, in position one because this is a uh, directly direct heater. There's no cathode in here. That's why position one on the leakage test always shows a complete short. And that's got to be the case. So double check now. 1.5, very important. 2, 0, 7, 3, 4, 100, 7, 3, 4, 100, 50, 600, 41. Okay. Tube in. These tubes also heat instantly. They're ready to go instantly. There we go. 1 shows the short, so that's the... That would explain why rectifiers do the same thing, because uh, all uh, I think the vast majority of rectifiers use do not have a cathode. I uh, use the heater itself. Wow, that's an incredibly low reading. What's it supposed to be? Four hundred and ten. Four hundred and ten is uh, right around there. Wow, it's really low. Oh, what happened there? Oh my gosh. Whew. Don't trust your tube tester, Jim. So there it is right on now. That's a lot more believable. because I think this radio's hardly ever been used. That's my guess. That's one of the reasons why it's so uh, uh, together, why it has all the parts. It's hardly been used. Okay, next one. Uh, so this is the next one's a diode. So this must be the detector tube. Bias. I hear you, peanut. I hear you, peanut. Seven zero zero three zero. He's crying. Zero six forty eight. Gentlemen, what are you guys doing? They are doing cat stuff. That's what they're doing. I shouldn't call them gentlemen, should I? That's not very nice. Okay, kind of messed up my lighting there. Ooh. This thing's glowing like a son of a gun. <gasps> Something wrong there. Can't be like that. Look at that thing. It's glowing like a son of a gun. What is happening? Was that doing that the whole time? Did I get halfway through making some changes here? What happened? This is a tester you can't make changes to while the tube's in. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. Did I make some? I can't remember. Darn cats, I did. I was whipping these numbers around. Duh. Bad, very bad. There's a demonstration of being bad. Occasionally I demonstrate bad things like that. But these are all set correctly now. Let's see if they are. Seven zero zero three zero. Seven zero zero three zero. Zero six zero zero. My other tube tester, you can change all the knobs you like while the tube is sitting in there, except for the two uh, uh, selectors for the heaters. I kind of got a little lazy on that. Oh, <laughs> there's the problem. Wow. Man alive, I, I gotta pay more attention. 
So I always say this is the most important knot to get right and I left it in the wrong spot. That's why that thing was glowing like a son of a gun. And then thank you cats. I'm going to blame it on you guys if that tube got damaged. I'm blaming it on, on you two cats. They don't appear to care. F. Well, I think we're ready to go again. Here we go. Should I put this back on C and see if the tube lights up like a light bulb? It wasn't terribly dramatic on camera, but... Uh, so now I cannot see any evidence of heating in that tube, which I think is normal. So let's just double check before I blow this thing up permanently. 1.5 D for diode, 70030, 0600, 48 over there, A over here. behaving the way it's supposed to. I guess I do the diode test on this. Diodes, okay. So I, I managed not to blow this tube up and that's a bit of a lesson in, in how rugged these tubes actually are. But I would not recommend doing what I just did to this one. Unbelievable, eh? Uh, in fact, uh, you can, with some tubes, you can kind of bring them back to life a little bit by doubling the heater voltage for 10 or 15 minutes. I've never tried it. What's going on here? So this will be the IF tube. Okay. 1U4. 1U4. Let's see if I can concentrate hard enough here to not make a stupid mistake. So 1.5 again, of course, 2. Zero on the bias once again. Seven three four zero K. Seven three four zero K. Fifty six hundred. Fifty six hundred. Forty three. Isn't this exciting? This is exciting stuff, eh? Setting this thing up here. Forty three with a C. Ooh, get it right. Notice the tube is not plugged in. And we got F1, the K1, and the K2. So K1, K2 means you test it, then you do that and test it again. The cats are running around like crazies. We're all set. Here we go. Okay, while that's exploding, we'll double check these. 1U4. 734 OK. 734 OK. <laughs> 5600. Yeah. C. Okay. Ready on the short. There's no F. No F. Yes, there is. There's an F. There's an F. There it goes. Hard to see uh, on the camera. And now 5800 is what we're looking for, which is yeah, right around in this area here. Well above, K2, same thing, tube's good. She's a winner. These are actually checking out really very good. It's a problem for me in explaining why the radio is not working though. I'd like to find one defective tube. Let's 
supposed to get that out of there. Push it out. Holy smokes! What's holding that in there? I was not squeezing it. That thing wouldn't move at all. And it came right out. I must have been squeezing it, I guess. Wow. Okay, what do we got here? And we got a. Uh, We can't read this one. Uh oh. The uh, label is damaged here. Huh. Get even a piece of it. Could be an L there. So it's one of the two coming out of the uh, tuner. Let me let me just take a peek at the manual here and uh, give me a second just give me a sec bear with me I'm gonna look at the manual and just see the picture which tube is which so this is I just pulled out V101 V101 and V101 is hang on a second Looking at the schematic, 101 is a 1U4. That's a 1U4. Wow, I'd never get that out of the... Oh my gosh, look at that. Pins are really bent on this guy. I didn't do that. So it's another 1U4. Which this is all set up for. Let me double check on the schematic. Whoops. camera cord caught on my foot there. V101 1U4 1U4 here. No question about it. A sticker in there. I saw a little little flash there. The uh, rush current going in and firing up the tube. And he's, but no, we just did one like this, so we know what to expect. There we are. And we're just ready on the mutual 580 once again. Should be up around here. And it is K2. El Perfecto. Another disappointment. How did it get how did it get bent that badly? Can can you kind of see the uh, pins? Like the tube, like this this happens because somebody smashes the tube over. That's usually the cause of that. And, and when you look in the radio, is somebody putting their hand in here and bang into this tube? Maybe that's what happened somewhere back there. Maybe the technician at Halicrafters did this. I'll put the cover on it. No one will ever know. We'll go back here, pull this guy out. So this is going to be 102. This is the 1L6. This is a mixer. This is the mixer oscillator. 1L6. One 1L6. 1 1.5210L. 10L 63454 How ironic it was I had that control wrong. Three, 360 is what we're looking for. F whole tube it says. I don't know. 
because you're doing the whole tube in one test. That's what it is. Whole tube in one test. Everything ready? Double check. One L four. One L six. What did I just do? I moved this a little bit. Here we are. One L six. One point five two ten L six three four five four six three four five four fifty seven hundred fantastic okay this this tube has to fail it must fail it must be bad no shorts uh, there's a bunch of uh, messages here is there F we just saw the F effect Hold two, just says hold two. Hold two, and uh, it works. The number should be only going up to 360, which is way down here. Just certainly where it gets to. How oh, disappointing! Is there another tube? Did I <laughs> another tube to test? Oh, I thought something easy was going to come of this. Nothing easy so far. I do with the tube cover. I don't know. So I did that, 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 that. I did five tubes. Five tubes, no luck. Here's the cover. <laughs> five tubes, no luck. Wow, okay, what what to try next? Um, now I did hear a little something out of the out of the speaker. How can that be if the output tube is is dead? Uh, as in uh, no no heater. Well that's not the case. Uh, at least for the two, no B plus. Probably no, no B plus is probably the next place to go. Check and see if there's B plus in this radio. There we go. What else could I do? Um, Good question. What else can we do with this thing? Still okay. Rectifier that's in here. Maybe it's let's let's get this up on the on my wheelie gig. this cord shorting in here but it looks okay there's no reason why I can't have this antenna plugged in during the testing phase here in fact it's smarter to have it in than to not uh, I did test this radio without the antenna hooked up well it's hooked up now <laughs> we're going to be looking for B plus, so we're going to get this guy going. Uh, spin it around like this. 
And I'd like to use my good old TVM for this. Vacuum to volt meter. Which is really a way of saying very sensitive high impedance low draw on the circuits under test. Okay, so we're ready to put this guy on. Uh, volume okay, so switches off. Volume's down of course because of that. Antenna on. Speaker always connected. I'm going to come on with our lights. I've fiddled around with this radio a little bit now. Fiddled around with the wire and stuff so let's, let's just put it on with the light. I'm going to change the restriction here. Okay, so we now have a 40 watt bulb restricting power into this radio. Probably still won't make much difference. Okay, so if you look just over here at this meter, you can see it's up high. This guy got electricity there. I flip this on, this meter should bump down and then come back up a little lower. Let's see what happens. Well, it, all these things work better when you plug the radio in. Watch that meter. Nothing happened. That's good. Now, okay. Now, will you tell the truth? Watching the overly bright meter here. There it goes down, and then it should come back up, 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 and then it should shoot, shoot downwards. May not with this radio though. So this is now running. This radio is running at 117 volts. So actually, with that light bulb restricting it, it's only a few volts off from full line voltage, which is just under 120. So drawing very little current. And this is supposed to draw very little current. Now, I turn it up. And I'm also going to put this on, I want to put this on the, uh, put this on the AM band here. Because right now, it is on, it is on the AM broadcast band, darn it. stick my ear thusly and what I hear is bzzz, well, more, not quite a buzzy sound more of a, a lower duller buzz so there's something coming out of the speaker that's a good start I guess uh, let's flip this band control any see, there's, you it kind of expect some clicks and noise to come out of the speaker Not a thing. Not a thing. Okay, we were going to look for B plus, weren't we? Let's do that. So, the meter over here is set on one and a half volts. We would have found it pretty good. Okay, on the 150 volt scale. Just to set the zero. Now, if I were a high voltage, where would I be? I would be on this red wire coming to this tube here. There it is. 75 volts. Ooh. Okay, so let's look at all the tubes. Um, this is the big power supply capacitor. There's the voltage. That's the big resistor here we will check. This guy could be the cause of the no heater current. It's a little bit distorted right up in here. Yeah, something is this this con contact here has poked its way through. See, it's covered here. It's not covered there. Heating heating effect. I don't know. There's another high wattage resistor up here too. Uh, but I don't know that that could shut the whole radio down. Okay, so if I were B plus on this tube, I would be right here. And there it goes. And if I were B plus on some other tube. 
And there's no other tube showing. Hidden way back in there. Okay, now if I were B plus, I would hide. Okay, I'll try some of these leads here. There it is right there. So, so we know B plus making it to that tube. What I do? I've done three or four tubes. Oh, two of them are. Oh, 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 oh. Two of them are up on here. How am I going to get at those? And I'm not going to. Except all the wires that go up there are right here. I think they're all here. So here's a nice red one. And there's voltage on it. That red one is probably carrying B plus up to both those tubes. Uh, let's look around. Okay, so another possibility in a dead radio is uh, a short circuited capacitor. One of the easy ways to find a short circuit capacitor is just measure the voltage to the chassis on either side of it. That's not necessarily a very, it's kind of a rough test. Expect a difference. See? So there's a negative there. Something similar there. So kind of a. So there we've got B plus on one side and on the other. The meter's actually being driven negative. This great big guy here. A little negative on one side. You know what? Because I'm reading through the chassis, I'm making a mistake. What I really want to read to is the B minus. The B minus is going to be on the other side of the capacitor that went to the chassis. Where did I see that? This one, this odd guy. So the B minus is going to be right here. This is B minus. B minus? B minus. So that's really where I want this. Watch out, everybody, if you're doing this at home. <laughs> you got to think about what kind of groundings on this lead, what kind of plug you got here, what, what kind of ground this is. In this case, it's not really a ground. So we go here. Because that's a two-prong meter. Also, the radio here is being powered from an isolation transformer. So, I don't usually talk too much about this, but... Okay, let's try again. Now, we'll check the chassis. I think we should not see anything there. Oh, we do. I won't worry about it. I, mean, I think I'm probably just mistaken about it. We shouldn't see anything there. So uh, we find B plus here. And now we're getting the full. Oh, wait a minute. No, we're not getting into Stop talking. So there we are, B plus, showing a little higher now because I've got the uh, meter connected more appropriately. Over here, you should find it here too, maybe. Nothing at all there. Just go through this resistor to the other side. Nothing there. Lots of big resistors here, big value resistors. What are you doing, Jim? Let's go up this way. And also, uh, the volume is up full on this radio, so if I hit something... I don't think I'm getting anywhere, so... The fact that we've got B plus proves this rectifier is rectifying. Uh, 
the voltage of the string uh, of the heater string to to the chassis or to one second I just gotta peek at that schematic to B B minus so I should be able uh, to get the heaters on the 3V4 should show 9 volts to B minus 9 volts oh boy the 3V4 which one 3V4 was the first one I pulled out it appears to be this one Double check quickly here. I'm just going to look at the, uh, the layout diagram. Uh, V3. Sorry about this. A little slow this morning, but I want to get this right. Not that I'm usually racing along anyway. V3, 3V4, that's all correct. So this is the base of the output tube. This is where the first heater voltage arrives. arrives. The heater pins are pins 1 five and seven. Seven is the one that should give me nine volts on this meter. Seven. If the heater string is open, I'm going to get a lot more than, than nine. So the heaters are seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's a seven pin this is it. Oh, yeah, a lot more. Right over. Okay. So, I'm supposed to be 9 volts there. Let's try this again. Pin 7. So, on the 50 volt scale, we're seeing 30 volts instead of 9. I suggest an open circuit in the tubes I just went through or the circuit itself. Uh, what do we get on the either side of this guy? A little puny? Okay, so we gotta see if it's different. I'm on the 1.5 volt scale now. So it's about a volt. And that's sl slightly more. That again indicates this this coil is functioning, or so it seems to function. Let's let's try it. Well, that also indicates there's current flowing through the heater string, doesn't it? So that indicates. I mean, everything I've done here suggests this radio is actually operating right now. Uh, let's go and stick some noise into the audio circuits. So uh, this is the output tube. So just by touching around here, in fact, let's be more specific about this. The grid on the output tube is the grid is pin number six. Pin number six, just before the nine volter. All this stuff. So we should hear this. I don't hear a thing. Okay. Uh, my meter's kind of jumping around funny there. Okay. Let's. What's the voltage on that? Whoa.
What's with all the jumping? I'm trying to steady my hand, but I don't want to touch the chassis at the same time I'm doing this. It's just a... Why the sudden... See, when I touch it, watch the jump up. Oh, that was a lousy. What's that indicating? There's a whole bunch of AC there. Whoa! Whoa! Didn't I convince myself this thing is running on DC? that I touched that through that meter right over like a crazy banshee. Um, oh, that's not a smart thing to do. Incoming AC, just to check my meter out. Incoming AC is up here. Don't ground anywhere. 150 volts AC. So there's the AC coming in. <laughs> okay. Calm down, calm down, Jim. You're going to get in trouble. So looking again for AC voltage in the heater string. I'm, I'm losing my mind here. at the schematic diagram just to reassure myself it really is on the other side of that it really is DC okay back to DC as if there's a voltage that builds up on this and when I touch the meter to it, it disappears. He says, demonstrating exactly the opposite. What's going on here? I don't feel that I'm getting consist consistent enough readings from the meter to pay any attention to any of this. Okay, so we're going back now, working back to the grid I saw a big voltage on it before. I'm listening and expecting something to come out of the speaker if there's anything funny here. So the meter's behavior is weird. Um, like we can read between the cathode now the cathode in this tube, 3V4, does it have a cathode? Mr. 3V4, no, is it directly heated? Directly heated. But it's not grounded, right? One of these heater legs is not grounded, it's in the middle of this voltage drop circuit. Be grounded from an AC point of view, uh, from a uh, signal point of view. The heater has a huge capacitor on the heater line, 80, 80 millifarad capacitor. That's probably AC grounding the heaters, or signal grounding the heaters. So, if I try to measure the, uh, the bias, 
I don't know what to think here. So, I don't know what to think. What am I thinking? What to think? Um, I'm not sure how to measure the bias on that, too. Bias relative to B minus. It seems to be the best way to do it. B minus is what the cathode is connected to. The heater, the heater, oh my god. My brain is turning to mush. Okay, back on, back on the grid. What's happening? What's on the other side of this capacitor here? So I see my meter bopping up and down, but it's not really, uh, it's not reassuring me. B plus again, just for reassurance sake. There it is. It'd be an extremely high impedance circuit I'm trying to measure. And uh, even though this meter doesn't draw much current, it's enough to uh, mess around with my head. So that's B plus. That's B plus. Uh, I mean, look, let's look at the circuit diagram and just see, because I'm not hearing anything coming out of the radio yet. I mean, I, I should have heard all kinds of <coughs> sounds. Nothing. And then what is this doing on that tube? Ooh, let's take a look. Okay, so here's the schematic. There's the tube string again. Here's the 9 volts. What did I measure there again? 9 volts on pin 7. I'm just making the measurement again here. The actual measurement was 30 volts. So, getting 30 volts here maybe a short on one on this short on this so a short on this would probably blow this too 100 well, that's probably that capacitor we were looking at. Because here's an 80 right on the other side. And then they do and they have another silencer down here, but look, it's only a 0 .001. So this is more like an RF silencer here, but these are big whoppers. 80 at 25 volts. 100 at 25 volts. 80 at 150 volts. Uh, so you should find this capacitor and find 6.4 volts on it. That's not quite why, why I put this up here, though. We want to look at this tube. That's the output tube. 92 volts on the plate. 92? Yeah, 92, 95 here. Why wouldn't that be 95 also? because of the drop through here. There we are, 1.2 volts. Doesn't say negative. There's a little asterisk there. So here's the integrated circuit and the wire coming out of it. That's the capacitor to ground, that other, that other one. What's that star there for? What are they, what's the star? Is there a secret surprise? Star, on some sets, C11 is 220. When making replacement, use 270. Picofarad. 270 picofarad. So uh, the output signal comes here. So we should hear the radio at this point. No, we shouldn't. We should hear it down here. Where's the volume control? We should hear it at the volume control. So 
So full signal should be here. Full radio signal should be here. Here we have a uh, shielded cable coming to the volume control. Let's listen to that. And uh, what did I discover down here? Possibility that one of these is shorted. So we can find these capacitors. They should have a voltage on them and not be zero. Or if I find a voltage anywhere along here, I did this already, didn't I? Didn't I go through this? Let's, let's listen to this radio and see if we can hear anything on the volume control. To the volume control. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to use this guy here. Uh, I feel the coffee wearing off. Okay, so we're going to ground this in the same way. And we're trying to hear the radio. So we want my signal tracer to be set for audio. Audio. Okay, we're ready to listen. What are we listening to? We wanted to listen at the top of the volume control. Volume control, oh, it's right up in there. Perfect. Shielded wire, shielded wire coming to it. A shielded wire. It's a shielded wire leaving it. It's funny, I thought it was shielded wire coming to it. Uh, green wire going to all these tone control stuff. Well, let's just poke around. Well, one of them's going to make some sound. Turn the volume down, and we'll go right on the uh, where the audio should be heading to the uh, amplifier. Okay, I'm on it. Volume up. Wow, it's just 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 dead. <laughs> the other side of the volume control here. Try here. Nothing over here. Nothing coming out of the radio. Get back up a little bit further. Listen to the RF signals in the radio. So we'll change the tracer to radio frequency. We'll set it to, I'm not sure what the I, 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 IF frequency is in here. What is the IF frequency in there? Bear with me one second while I try to figure that out real quick. Uh, it should be in the alignment instructions. Uh, bear with me here, sorry. Four fifty five. Four fifty five. Okay, great. So what we'll do is we'll tune this to four fifty five. So we want to be on band A four fifty five. Somewhere around there. Okay, now we want to listen to the IF tube. Okay, so I think it's this one down here. Let's listen around. Here we hear. Would probably be. Radio? No. Okay.
Okay, so this is the uh, plate. Let's make a good contact here. There. Listen carefully. You tune it. Watch my fingers. Where are we on this? The radio here worked. Right in here is where there's signals. Well, there's a little something going on. There's a little something going on now. Maybe the IF isn't tuned exactly to 450. Maybe I didn't get it on the IF. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I can't remember which is which. doing is I'm going to tune the uh, signal tracer. Oh, come on. Nothing happening. Probably on the wrong tube. See if there's one of the let's just see. Let's just see. Hang on a second. 